Hey everybody, Lisa Young Sutton here with the next video in the Lenormand School series and today I'm going to introduce the box spread, also known as a portrait or a nine square. So what is a box spread? A box spread is the smallest complete tableau. So you've heard people say that once you master a nine square, the next step is the grand tableau and that is very true. So. There are different ways we can read a box spread. We can read it just as we would read around any card in a grand tableau. So say you were reading a GT and you wanted to get information on someone's personal life. What do you do? You look for the house card and you read all the cards that touch it. So there's your nine square. If you have nine cards around it, which in a nine square you always do. Okay, so that is my main method of reading a box spread, just as I read any box in a grand tableau. But you can also choose to read your box spread as past, present, future, uh, broken into the, um, separated by the columns, okay? This column is past, this column is present, this column is future. Now some people will uh, separate the rows into, usually I think past is usually in the bottom, or they might have passed on the top, but they may separate it by rows. So if you ever see that, don't be alarmed. It's just another method. It's just their way of doing it, but it's no different than if you uh, have this uh, left-hand column as the past, this is present, this is future. You can also read um, a nine square uh, for timing. So if you wanted to read about uh, someone's relationship for the next three months, you can break the columns into uh, months. So you have first month, second month, third month. All right, now I'm gonna demonstrate all three of the methods I just mentioned in the next video. This is a two-part video. Um, the first part, I'm just introducing you to the nine square and what the cards mean and the steps and the second video uh, following this one will be the demonstrations. All right, so what do we have in a box spread? Well, we have three rows, we have three columns, we have two diagonal lines, we have a center focus card, we have a cross, we have a diamond, uh, we can knight, uh, you can knight every card except the center card, and we can mirror, okay? You can diagonally mirror cards, like this mirrors this, this mirrors this, and your opposite cards mirror, um, you know, it's a cause and effect method. Okay, so now we can pre-select our focus card if we want to. Now, I almost never do. Um, I will if I want to read about um, physical characteristics and personality traits of a person or animal, I will pull that card out, set, uh, set it in the center, and then I will shuffle and choose my other cards to lay around it. Um, but for the most part, I never choose, uh, pre-select my center card. But when I thought about when I was first learning, and I think this is important, I always did. And I think that was because otherwise I got lost too easily. So I needed that focal point, you know, I needed to have at least one card. I just knew what it meant, right? <laughs> no, because I put it there. Maybe that was it. But I think if you're first starting out, you might always want to, uh, you know, just stick your, uh, just, <laughs> just stick your focus card right in the middle. And then you'll uh, select all your other cards to read around it. So that might be the way to always start this. All right. Now, what are some points to consider here? Um, Commit to one way of reading this until you master it. You know, I just described a few different ways you can read it, right? For timing, for past, present, future, or um, reading around um, the center card as you would in a grand tableau. Um, and also, the other, the other things to consider are um, what meanings are you going to assign to the top row to the bottom row to the left column and the right column in other words some people will put the person card here they'll pre-select that card and they want these to be thoughts these to be um, feelings or this is what they're um, 
uh, what they're thinking, what they don't want to think about. This is inauspicious, what they don't want to face. This is easy, what they are facing. This is past, pre you know what I'm saying? Uh, you can you can do that, but if you change it up every time you do it, you're never going to get good at this. You're never going to master. Well, I shouldn't say never. <laughs> I always say never say never, but it'll take you a lot longer. So pick one method and master that. And before you know it, you'll you'll throw down a nine square and you'll read it in a few seconds and you'll think, oh my gosh, why did I ever think this was hard? So commit to one way of interpretation and stick with that until you master it. Now, what do, do all these cards mean? Okay, let's get into that. Card one is where the story begins. It's also called your primary influencer. This box here gives you a complete story. This is the beginning of the story. This is the end of the story, all right? Uh, card five is the heart of the matter. Every card touches your center card, so it's the heart of the story. Card seven down here, I call the hidden influence card. Some people call it the underlying influence card. But check this out. Energy flows from top to bottom and left to right. So when you have top to bottom, left to right energy, you have this, okay? <laughs> Which if you look at this, it bypasses this card. So that's why that is always my hidden influence card. All right, so nine, card nine, is the exit card or where your story ends. Begins here. This is the heart of the story. This is where the story ends. Okay, so let's look at my primary line. My, I'm an X person. Okay, X marks the spot. Now, I like diagonals. It's kind of like looking at the world with uh, one eye closed or something. It's a sideways kind of thing. I don't know. So I'm, a, I'm very much a diagonal person. So um, my primary line is 159. And there are plenty of times when I lay a nine square and I look at 159 and I have my answer and I don't even really, I barely need to even look at the other cards. The other cards are just providing extra details, but it's 159 is my answer. All right. So that is a direct, that provides direct information, right? The other diagonal line provides indirect information, right? Because that line is heading to the hidden influences. So X marks the spot. All right, some people choose the cross for their main reading method. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's not much different than, than the X. It, they they uh, intersect the center card, right? And you have your, your center column and your center row. So that is a very direct way to, to, uh, to start the reading by focusing on your, your cross. Okay, so what do all these cards mean as far as your rows and your columns? Okay, you have to, you have to give those meanings. So your cards on top always influence the cards below. They are weighing down. Remember, energy moves from top to bottom. So this is always the, the case no matter what uh, meanings you assign to these, okay? So these cards are weighing down on these. These are affective cards. They are affecting these cards. What's catching that effect? These cards below are affected by the affective <laughs> cards, right? So you have your top row is weighing down. This center row is kind of like where you're at right now. This is reality. This is what you're, you're looking at at the present moment, okay? And then this is um, the bottom row is catching everything, okay? It's catching everything that's coming down. And again, like I said, it's, it's moving top to bottom and left to right. So this is these, uh, some people call these supporting cards, foundational cards, whatever it is, no matter what, this is where the story ends, but it's catching everything that started up here. Okay. No matter what uh, meanings you're giving these cards, whether these are thoughts or feelings or, you know, what you don't want to face, it doesn't matter. The energy is still going left to right, top to bottom. So just get that straighten your head and you're you're off to a great start okay so what are the steps for tackling this bad boy well 
the first thing you have to do is formulate your best question and write it down just like the uh, the three card video I made and the five card video this is still a small spread even though it's the it's a tableau it's the small it, it's still a small spread it's not a grand tableau where you have the entire deck down and you don't even need a question because you can answer you know a dozen questions um, by reading around all, all of the um, the theme cards in in this this is a small spread which means you selected these cards or at least eight of them if you pre-selected that one uh, you pulled eight cards out of that deck so that makes your uh, context and question of the utmost importance so do that just as you do with any other small spread formulate your question and write it down then you want to decide on a time frame if applicable and I say if applicable because if I'm laying a box for a descriptive reading there's no time frame involved um, for any descriptive reading that I can think of off the top of my head but um, you know, say I wanted to place um, the dog card in there. I'm reading for a dog and I just want to know about his personality and physical traits. Well, I stick him in there and then I draw my other cards and lay them around. There's no time frame involved in that, right? So I think you understand what I'm saying there. Okay, so you formulate your question, you decide on a time frame if applicable, because even if you're not breaking um, these into columns, you can still lay a nine square and say, this is, um, you know, my question is what's going to happen over the next six months for, you know, such and such. So that, that's your time frame. It's built into your question, right? Okay, so your center card can be pre-selected or not. Um, like I said, and shuffling now. Shuffling is important. So I'm going to show you this because a bunch of people have asked me to demonstrate this. And you know, when I thought about it, I thought, my gosh, when I was first starting out and I was reading some things online about how to, how to read cards, because I started out as an animal communicator. I knew nothing about cards at all. I had, I've, I've never even had a professional <laughs> card reading. Um, so yeah, you know, I knew nothing at all about cards or how any of this worked. Um, and I would read things online and, and they would say things like, okay, you have to, this is very important. You know, after you've bathed your cards in under the full moon, you know, you take them and you, you knock three times and then you, you, um, break them into piles you, then you have to put this pile here and this one here oh wait and then put this one here and this one <laughs> and I was like oh my gosh I don't know what you guys are doing I'll never remember any of this so you know I didn't do it plain and simple and I, really what happened is when I would read different websites they were telling you to do it differently and so then I know I said you know what this is just other people's methods that they're sharing it doesn't mean this is how you have to do it you have to do it in a way that makes sense to you. So I'm going to show you how I do it since I was asked. Okay, so I take my decks. I do um, smudge my decks a lot. Um, and I, I, you know, I take very good care of them. I, my hands are always clean. I keep them wrapped in my little bags, my little velvet bags. Um, so I do, I respect my cards, you know. And when I first take a, a deck out, I do knock it because I want to get the, the last reading energy off it. So I, I tend to hit it on the table. Sometimes I do it in my hand. Um, and I also, I fan the deck out and I hold it over my incense or my aromatherapy. I hold it to my heart. I say a little prayer and then I'm ready to start shuffling. Now shuffling for me is not such a big deal and you'll know why in two seconds, but Shuffling is nothing more than time for me to focus. All right, I'm focusing on my question. I keep looking at my question that I had written down. I keep uh, repeating it over and over. Sometimes I actually stop. I'm like, no, you know what? Wait, I didn't think of this and, and I'll change it, you know? So this, this is good uh, time. It's a good time to think about what you're doing, but I'm putting the energy into the deck of what I'm about to ask. I'm also focusing on the person or animal I'm reading for. And if it's me, I'm focusing on myself. I'm asking, if I'm reading for myself, I'm asking my guides, um, my ancestors. Uh, I do a lot of ancestor work. So I'm, I'm usually asking my ancestors um, 
for assistance, you know, if I'm reading for myself. But anyway, sorry, I have very arthritic hands, um, so I drop a lot. So, okay, shuffling is nothing more than time for me to focus. <laughs> Come on, hands, don't fail me now. All right, um, the reason I said that fo uh, shuffling is not such a big deal for me because I'm not drawing off the top of the deck, all right? That's when shuffling, I think, is much more important, right? You have to shuffle until you get a sign that you're, you're done because then you're just pulling cards in order off the top. I never do that. I've never, ever done that. Um, so that's why shuffling is not that big a deal because I shuffle just until I feel like I'm completely centered and focused. I then fan the cards out in my hand. If I'm using a big deck or if I have two decks together or something, I fan it out on the table. I draw my cards by feel. I feel like this card is right. I wave my hand over. Some people say it's heat or cold. For me, it's just a feeling. It's just, it's just intuition. That's it, right? I already told the cards how many cards I'm, I'm drawing. If this were a three card, a five card, seven, nine, you know what I mean? So there you go. So I draw my cards and I wouldn't just throw them in a pile normally like if I was laying a box I'm drawing them and I'm laying them as I draw them okay now when I lay cards for a box spread this is how I do it always in order one to nine and that was another thing that I used to read online that you have to put the center card first then you have to go in a certain order you have to go clockwise or whatever it is I've never done that either I thought I don't want to have to remember all this stuff it's messing with my don't mess with my magic, okay? I just, I don't want to have to think so much. So I just do everything in order and then I don't have to think about how I did it. All right, so, oh, this is a good point too. If you notice, I always lay my cards upside down. Why? <laughs> because if I don't, I start reading the cards or forming opinions right away and I don't even have all the cards down. So I don't want to do that. So I lay them all upside down first. Well, except for a grand tableau. I'm not, I'm not going to handle those cards twice, but for everything up to a nine square, I lay the cards upside down first, and then when I have them all down, then I turn them over. All right, so that is my method. Take it or leave it. But I was asked to show it, and I'm more than happy to share everything. Okay, so come here. You come back here. All right, so that's the shuffling. Okay, once all the cards are down... I form a quick opinion. I, I do a, a quick glance. And some people are very focused on those playing card insets. They're looking to see how many hearts they have, how many diamonds, clubs, or trouble, right? Spades in Lenormand are good cards. They're all positives or neutrals, um, which is opposite of cardomancy, typically, right? But um, a lot of people are looking at those playing card insets to, to form their first opinion. Um, I am looking for positive and negative cards or theme cards, okay? I'm looking for, always looking for correlations, especially if I'm laying a nine square for someone who didn't give me a very specific question and they're being kind of elusive, you know? Um, if I have three cards from the work theme, I know that that's what's on their mind, okay? That's what I mean by theme cards. Or, and I'm looking to see if I have a primary significator show up or a partner card or especially if I have both of them. I also look for my uh, court, court insets because those are important to me. Not everyone reads them, I do. So if I had like the king or the, you know, the queen and the king say they were both from the same suit, especially if they landed like here and there was a card between them, that, that to me is gonna say something. All right, so. That's my quick glance. I then note my center card if it wasn't pre-selected, okay? I wanna see what card is at the heart of the matter. I wanna take note of where the story is starting, where it's ending, and I wanna take note of my hidden influences. That's where I start my process every single time. All right. What you do then is you start to form sentences. So you need to know your card meanings your primary vibes, right? If you're using your learner's deck that you made from that video I showed, then that will be a, very easy for you, right? You got your little keywords written, your primary vibes written right on the cards. 
So you look at your rows and you're writing all this down now. You're gonna form a sentence from these three cards, from these three and from these three, write them down. Then you form a sentence from these three, these three, three, these three. You can form a sentence from your diagonals. You can form another um, complete sentence from your cross, your uh, diamond, you know, whatever you wanna do. You, you will start by trying everything and then you'll quickly figure out what works for you, what's needed, what's not needed, and you'll break it down to just the most important steps. All right, so, but in the beginning, try everything. You know, throw it all against the wall, right? See what sticks. <laughs> okay, so now you're starting to put your story together. You already know how your energy is flowing. You already know this is where your story begins and this is where it ends. And now you're, you're forming all your sentences with your details. So basically, there's your reading, okay? In the next video, like I said, I'm going to demonstrate the three readings I just described by breaking the, um, the columns into time frames, by breaking them into past, present, and future, into reading the box just as you would around a, a center card and a grand tableau. So that is the video that's coming up next. All right, so, but one thing I wanna leave you with is to remind you to keep referring back to your question constantly. No different than with any other small spread reading because now you have nine cards in front of you. It's very easy to get lost. Constantly keep referring back to your question and you'll be fine. Okay, so that's it for this video. The next video is coming up and that will be the demonstrations of three ways to read the box. Okay, see you there. Thanks, bye-bye.